Okay, so this is a 3D sketch I put together uh, at a users group meeting last night, and it was uh, there to demonstrate uh, how you could use a 3D sketch on top of uh, as a top part in a feature manager tree to help to drive the design of all the parts inside that assembly. So it's a sketch-driven assembly is the way, the way that works. And so this 3D sketch is what we're using. And what I'd like to show you today is how to put a circle in here as a reference geometry that we're going to be able to use in uh, one of the parts in our assembly. So one thing to notice about our 3D sketch here that uh, was, uh, you know, wasn't apparent last night, it's got a negative sign on it. And just like in a 2D sketch environment, you want to make sure that everything's fully defined. Uh, sometimes this happens where you click your mouse a little bit too quick when you're sketching something and putting something together. And it's not apparent, like, what's going on, like, what's, uh, what's not uh, right here. We have everything fully defined. If you turn on our sketch uh, relations in here, you can see that we have uh, an adequate amount of relations in here, too. Like, what is it? Where, where is it? And one way to check this is a lot of times when you're clicking your mouse real quick, as I just alluded to, is that sometimes you put in, like, an extra line. I call it a pony line. It's uh, really small and you really can't see when you're looking at it from a uh, general view. And a way to find that is just make a selection box uh, specifically around these corners over here and see if you can find it. I kind of know where it is. I don't think it's down here, but it looks kind of thick up here. And if I were to do that, now you notice that something is light blue in the background and it's kind of showing up here. So you want to take that line and delete that. Now we should be in pretty good shape. So that negative sign disappears. So on to the circle. Let's put in a circle in here. Let's put a circle in on this front face. You can see the origin down here in our 3D sketch. So essentially what we'd like to do is put a circle in on this front uh, plane down here. But we're not going to use a plane to do that. We're going to uh, make it uh, parallel to that plane, at least initially. And we're going to find it with some reference geometry. So let's uh, pretend we're actually doing this in a 2D sketch environment. And I'll show you uh, that we can put in all the dimensions that we uh, need to for a circle to fully define it in its space. And it still won't fully define. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and traps to avoid in order to get that fully defined. But let me show you some uh, reference geometry. We have a flange that we're going to be putting in on the very top of our model. And one thing to keep in mind, once we have our model in place, once we have our 3D sketch in place, we can, continue, we can start now using uh, the references that we have in here as references for additional geometry we're going to put in here. For instance, for a flange that we're going to be putting in on the top of our part, and on top of our assembly in one part, we could actually use a line up here, like a, a construction line, in order to establish some reference geometry in here. We can use this line as a base, that line as a base. We can't really make that, or we can make these uh, actually parallel to each other as one way, or we can make that along the, the axis, which would be the x-axis. And that's one way to define that. Now we could put a smart dimension in here too by selecting those two elements in here, and maybe, maybe making that two inches. So now that's fully defined, and we can continue on with the model and uh, add some reference geometry in there that we can use for each individual part in the assembly. So let's add some additional uh, geometry in here in order to put our circle in. We can uh, put a, a, a line between the center point up there and the center point of the line on the bottom. Let's do the same thing over here. We're going to do a, a line over here between that point, that midpoint, and this point over here too. And with a circle, let's go ahead and uh, go up to the circle command. It's suggesting that we uh, sketch on the x, uh, y uh, axis, but uh, we can do that in other axes. But let's uh, do this. Just because uh, we wanted to get it uh, close to that uh, uh, plane that would be represented by the x, y axis, let's go ahead and keep that, uh, that reference. And if we sketch that out, now you can see that circle come into place. We made a coincident relationship with that vertical line in here. And we could define this a little bit better, too. We can put a dimension on that, maybe 12 inches, and then define uh, between that circle and the bottom down here, we can make that maybe 10 inches. Now, normally, in a 2D sketch environment, that would be enough to uh, make that circle fully defined, but it's not fully defined. And the normal ways that we could use this to maybe stretch it or pull on it to see what we might need to do to make that fully constrained, uh, we don't really have that capability. The easiest way to do this, as I talked about in the users group meeting last night, is to click on endpoints of lines uh, when you have blue lines in an underdefined sketch and see what you need to do to those lines, see how it stretches out, see what you need to do to uh, make that uh, fully defined. It's hard to do that here, and if we turn to sideways, it looks like that's right on the right on the XY plane. Since we don't have any linear elements in here, we can't define anything to an XY axis on this here too. So what do we do? 
Well, what, what we need to do is we need to add some additional uh, reference geometry in here. So let's do this. I'm going to uh, do this. I'm going to make this exaggerated a little bit. And I'm going to sketch in a line, which has got a coincident relationship with each side of the circle. Now we could take that line, and normally in a 2D sketch environment, we can make that horizontal or vertical. But here we can't. So we need to think about the axes. So uh, let's go ahead and consider the x-axis. And so we're going to make that along the x. So it's going to make that what would be perceived in a 2D sketch environment to be horizontal. Now let's take the midpoint of that line. Let's go ahead and select midpoint over here in our shortcut menu and in the midpoint of the circle and make that coincident. So now you can see that that line's black, that uh, construction line's black, and that circle is still not fully defined. And we can't really take that circle and make uh, any, you know, we can't really move it around. Although if you tug in that point over here a little bit, you can see that uh, the circle seems to be rotating like a transom window uh, as if this were a hinge. And now you can kind of see what we need to do in order to make that change. So now we need to make a, a you know, put perhaps one a way to resolve this is to maybe put a point in here or maybe another horizontal or vertical line in here that would define the very top of the circle to this line over here. I don't really like stacked lines, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a point. So we have our already uh, three points in here, uh, at least along a, a line in here. But you need at least three points in uh, three different locations, nonlinear points, in order to find a plane. So we're going to keep that in mind. So we're going to go and click on point, and we're going to plant that on a circle in an arbitrary location. And we can take that point and move that around, you know, so we kind of have that brown rectangle that shows up. That means that, uh, you know, the circle is going to move a little bit to the position of that new point. One thing you can't do, here's kind of a trap. What we're going to do with that point is we're going to take that point and establish a relationship with this horizontal line, or this line along the x-axis. But what we can do is we can establish a relationship between that point and this vertical line over here. If we try to do that, for some reason it fails. And it seems to be related to already having a, a, an existing relationship with a point on that circle, the very center of that circle with that line too. We don't have a reference to this uh, horizontal line of this line along the x-axis. So let's go ahead and do control Z and uh, let's get out of that. Now let's actually take that point and this line and establish that. And once we do that, make a coincident relationship. That circle snaps into place. It's now right along the xy uh, axis, or the plane that might be perceived to be uh, created by, the, by this geometry in our 3D sketch, uh, parallel to the xy axis, and now it's fully defined. So remember, two points, this point, that point, and that point, nonlinear points, will define a plane. And if you put that in a circle and define those the way we just did, the circle will get fully defined in the 3D sketch environment. Okay, just to follow up before I close this out, I notice that we have a negative sign over here in our 3D sketch. So let's go ahead and rebuild that and see what happens. Okay, so that negative sign disappears, and now it is fully defined. So I thought there might have been something I left out here, but it looks like everything's good. So we're ready to go. Have fun with putting circles in. I think that'll work out with uh, other elements in here, too, as a way to define that. Just remember those three points, nonlinear points. And you need to put that on, uh, make references to existing references that are already there in your 3D sketch environment.